Recently, I did a video on the importance of bushing a bell crank, and it did not come out too well because I have my camera on a tripod. I don't have anybody following my actions, and my hands were in my way when I was trying to show certain things. <clears throat> so I thought I'd redo it and give it another shot. The bell crank is the most important part of a uh, control line airplane as far as the control system goes. It is the heart of the control system. Or as I said in my previous video, I like to call it the brain of the bell crank, of the control line system. Um, like the human brain, if something goes wrong with the bell crank, and this is the bell crank right here, uh, if something goes wrong with the bell crank, then the rest of the plane is not going to function properly, just like the human brain. When the human brain has a stroke, then the rest of your body cannot function. It may be your mouth, it may be your arms, it may be your legs, but it's the central nervous system, uh, the central control system of the body. Same way here. If this were to fail in flight, then you're going to lose your airplane. The bell crank, of course, pivots around here. This piece that you see, this is a, let me explain what this is. This is a SIG bell crank, a nylon bell crank that I bought from Eric Rule at RSM Distribution out in California. Now his bell crank, he buys the SIG bell cranks and puts these bushings. You see these brass bushings that are put into the holes where the lead out wires go. These are very important. One thing that you find on imports, uh, let's just say ARFs that come from China or somewhere, um, you will have probably a metal bell crank with no bushings in there and the wire just looped around inside there. Uh, and what will happen eventually is that after uh, some flights, um, that wire is going to eat through that hole in the bell crank and you're going to have a catastrophic failure and the plane's going to crash. So it's very important to have these holes in the bell crank bush, which Eric does for me. I put all these in all my Ringmaster ARFs and in my own personal airplanes, whether it's a three inch bell crank like this one, or sometimes on the bigger stunners, I use a four inch bell crank. But what you're looking at, and these brass bushings are very, very important. Now, in addition to that, when I put a lead out wire in, let me show you this. This is the piece, uh, and this, and what you're looking at right here in this finished bell crank, you're seeing a um, bushing made out of copper tubing that the lead out wire has gone through and been wrapped and then secured with this uh, heat shrink tubing. This is the finished product that you're looking at right there. But in order to get there, I had to take some of this copper tubing, this 1 16th inch copper tubing, I had to cut it in like one and one quarter inch lengths, like you're seeing here. And I take it and I put it in my vise up like that and take a butane torch and heat it to where it gets really hot for a few minutes. And then it's soft and easy to work with. You then run your piece of lead out wire. This is 0 0.27 or 27 gauge lead out wire through that. So you've got a tag in sticking out here. In order to do what I've done there, what you have to do is take your lead out wire through the piece of copper tubing, stick it through the hole in the bushing, hold it, take a, a screwdriver or a quarter inch dowel or, or I mean a, an eighth inch dowel or something like that and you bend it like so get it to, so that you don't have a what you want is for it to be free and move on the bell crank without any binding or anything. And the reason I was using that little screwdriver is to sort of give me that loop. So when you finish this, then you've got this tag in sticking here. And the way you wrap this is that you want to take a piece of 28 gauge copper wire, which I have in my hand right here. Now I'm going to try to do this. I can't see what I'm doing. So I'm going to try to do this just for the camera. You take it. You hold it kind of right there and you start to wrap it. And you wrap this around. And you get several wraps on it. And take a pair of needle nose pliers or something or forceps and you just kind of push, keep pushing this, this back to tighten it up against each other, the coils. And you wrap. And you want to come out 
as far as your wrapping goes, maybe an inch or so, like that. And then what you're going to doing is you will pull this back, fold this tag in back over. I'm hoping you're seeing this. And then wrap it also. You will wrap it. And when you're finished with that, you take your, your piece of shrink wrap tubing that you see here, and you slide it up over the, the lead out, up over here, and then heat it, and you come out with something that looks like that. The importance of this is can, cannot be overstressed. Um, a bushed bell crank, this is double bushing actually. You've got the whole bush by Eric, he takes the brass bushings and put in there. I, I run the wire through the copper uh, and then bend it over and uh, that also acts as a bushing which gives you really freedom of motion and will keep it from eating through the bell crank and pulling out and causing you to crash your airplane. So this is done in all the arfs that I make for anybody. Uh, the ringmasters use this particular bell crank, the three inch sig bell crank, that's all you need in a ringmaster and, the, and they are bushed like that. Of course, the leadouts run to the end of the wing where they connect to the cables in which you're flying. It goes to the handle, and that's how you control the airplane. So this is the brain. This has to work, or nothing else is going to work. So I hope that helped, and I hope this is a better video than the first one was.